Yeah, that was an awesome, awesome song. Wow, I just sat there with my eyes closed. It was like I was listening to the radio or something. That was beautiful. What a great service. Good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Joseph Drolshag, and I'm honored to be here. Where's Reverend Murdy? He took off. He left. He, uh, <laughs> just, just getting to know him, you guys are so fortunate to have a, a pastor or a reverend like that here, a minister here for, like that, that really is about growing this, growing the footprint in the community and stuff, and just to get to be a part of this. It's, it's funny, I'll just start out where I, I, aside from having this passion to be right here where I'm at today, for 30, since I was 22 years old, I'll say, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and I was taught that a man gets a job, supports a family, and so I bought that hook, line, and sinker, built a career all the way up to a vice president of sales for a $60 million corporation. Yeah, and well, I had this passion the whole time, and it was just, in, you know, I, so I've been a student of what I'm doing in through Unity Church for this whole three, de- plus, three plus decades of my life. And so bringing this forward and, and, and living this is, you know when they talked about the shadows up there in that song, that was like perfect because that's where we learn in our life is from those shadows. And today I get to live in this. And really what I do is I get to help people, I empower people to live in their passion, to live in their dreams, to live that vision, those things of what they would love to be, do, have, give, and experience in their life. So really excited I get to be who I am today and not fill that role of what I was taught I was supposed to be. And part of me being responsible today after that 30-some years of, of corporate America and building career I didn't want and such, part of my being responsible to myself today is every Monday in my life is fun day. And I take every Monday, and I'll take the motorcycle or the Jeep, or I'll take my dog hiking. We'll go see waterfalls, fishing. Just, but every Monday is dedicated, and I do not break that, and I honor that. And that's one of the things I teach. So today, what, what a great service. I'm, like, all pumped up here. But <laughs> so today I would like to focus on unity principle number three, which is, does anybody know what, that, what unity principle number three is? That's okay, that's okay. So unity principle number three is I create my experience by what I choose to think, what I choose to feel, and believe. And that makes sense, right? Okay, so let me ask this. How many people feel like you live by that and you're living the, the abundance in every area of your life, your health and your well-being, your love and your relationships, your vocation, and your life work, and your time and money freedom. That's awesome. And that's the people I want to get as as mentors for a side thing that I do for a nonprofit with working with high schoolers to get them to ignite that passion within them rather than looking at what they're going to go to school for a paycheck for. So that's great. And for me, like I've been doing this, like I said, a long time. I, I wouldn't raise my hand at that. I live in some level of abundance, but I run into my upper level limits, and I run into those patterns and those paradigms from my, you know, and, and that caused my thinking, right? So really, let me ask you guys this. What causes our thinking? The way we were raised, our beliefs. What else? Past experiences, right? That, all of that forms our thinking. Now, how many of you, like myself, have ever had that argument going on in your head, and you're like a sidebar to it. You're not even involved in it, but you see that battle going back and forth, that tennis match in your head. How many people have experienced that? Yeah, and that's okay. So when I talk about living your highest self, living through your highest self, you know that that entity in you that's noticing that argument is the one I'm talking about. That's the one that notices what we notice, and everything changes from there. So I have this philosophy in my life that I believe God experiences the human condition by how I live. And I believe that God experiences the human condition by how each one of you live your life. And so if I'm living, I move around a lot. Some people tell me I get my 10,000 steps with each talk I give. (laughs) But but I believe that God experiences, if I'm living in self-confidence and I'm living in self-love and I'm living in abundance and I'm living with that, open to that flow of the universe back and forth, in that exchange, God experiences a different life of mine than when I'm living in depression and, and beat up in that lower level of things, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, awesome, yes. So I want to illustrate this with a story, okay? 
So I've been doing this, like I said, for some time. I have a book, you know, the workshop. The workshop is all about getting tools to move into this life, to ignite, open up that passion, and move into that life. And I want to talk to you. Are you the one doing Reiki? I want to talk to you about level two. Level one. Anyways. <laughs> So not long ago, I was at my doctor's office within the last four or five months, okay? And I have some issues with my sugar. And she said, well, it's time that you go see a specialist for this. Joe doesn't want to see a specialist for this. Joe doesn't want to not be able to eat a donut now and again or things like that when I want to, right? So, but anyways, so I do my best with it. But anyway, so I come out of the doctor's office and I go up to the counter and, you know, where the pay, the copay. Now, I have my own insurance because I've resigned from a six-figure income as a vice president of sales with a company car, insurance, and all this stuff. This will come up again in a minute. But So anyway, so I walk up to the counter, and I end up paying my bill. And she goes, well, your insurance only covers two office visits a year at $50 per office visit. And I'm thinking, I pay hundreds of dollars a month for this insurance. So Joe's not happy right now. <laughs> so from there, I drive to the pharmacy to pick up this new prescription they want me. And the prescription is $580. My insurance that, let me say again, I pay hundreds of dollars a month for, pays $18. So I walked out of there, and I got in my truck, and I just sat there deflated. And I sat there just like, oh, my God, did I make a mistake? Oh, my God, did I mess up my life now? I walked away from my income with insurance and all this other benefits to do you know, this, and, and, and I'm going to die broke. It was that, you ever have that when something happens, that first thought is disaster? We start from a disaster point in our life? Okay. Now, I have a lot of tools that I've learned by implementing that I teach my clients and groups and people I work with and such. One of, so just as this happens, anyways, my phone beeps. Now, I have this, one of the tools I've lived by for years is, and I have four reminders every day set in my phone. It's the same time every day, and I've been doing this for years, and I can't tell you what times they go off. But four times a day, my phone goes off, and it says, speak blessings into this moment. Now, imagine coming out of that pharmacy after the doctor's appointment, after finding out I have to see a specialist, which means my condition got worse, and then this insurance, two times now, and I'm sitting in my truck feeling this deflation and feeling this, man, did I screw up? And I look at my phone, and it says, speak blessings into this moment. Like, what would you have felt like right there? What would you have done with that message that popped up on your phone? <laughs> would you have jumped up in joy and started going at it? My first thought, honest to God, was to open the window and just chalk the phone out, right? Right? You connect with that. That's... But I know things today from doing this stuff that I didn't used to know. And I know how these things work. And I know that my thinking determines my feeling. My feeling determines the actions I do or don't take. And that ends up determining my outcome in my life. And a lot of people don't think so. A lot of people think they're victims of life. But it can't work any other way. So any time you can look at your situation, circumstance, or conditions and it'll drive back and let you know what your thinking is. Make sense? Now, in that moment when that went off, throwing that phone out the window, would you say I'd have been justified in doing that? Yeah. But I know, again, what I know. So in that moment, I, I, knowing that, as I just said, God, I guess I'm happy I'm breathing. <laughs> and I felt complete. But that didn't change anything, and that tone inside of me didn't change anything. And I knew with inside of me, stopping there, I wouldn't end up with experiencing results I wanted to experience in my life. I never do. By not doing it or by shortcutting it or just, it, it doesn't usually pay, you know, benefit me and put me in a pl place of this third unity principle. So I started over knowing that, and it was, it was like I was, I was pulling it to get it to, you know what I mean, to get it started, to get that engine started kind of. And I just said, God, this is not word for word, but it's very similar to how it went. And I started out in that place, of, and I just said, God, I, I, I don't want, you know, 
I know that you take care of me. I know my needs have always been met. I know when I look in my rearview mirror of my life, there was always a solution there before I even realized there was a problem. All of a sudden, took over. It was like a spiritual awakening in my life. And it's not the first time. And it was, God, I know, I know you're always here for me. I know you want to experience the best through my life. And I know I am on my mark. I am doing your work. I am serving my purpose in my life in this lifetime. And I know you will always have my back. Now, what I would have loved to have done is before I even started that prayer, when that event first came up, and it came to me about this time in saying it that day, is I'd love to look at that situation coming up and go, I know this is going to be beneficial somehow in my life. I just don't know how yet. But I'm not there. So I started at that place. Now all of a sudden I'm moving into this and I go, God, you are so mighty. You're so much more powerful than any circumstance or situation I will ever face in my entire life. And I just started pouring into it. That took me about as long as it just did a minute and a half to two minutes. I had a complete different change of how I was feeling and the power available to me over that situation. Not only did I have that change in my feeling, it drove right up into my thinking and my thinking changed because I drove away from there laughing about the thought of throwing my phone out the window and thinking, man, I got a client call later. I'm sure glad I didn't do that. And, <clears throat> and all of those things, but it was a complete change of the state of mind that I live in. And I couldn't use a better example. And then that came up. Okay, so now three days later, right? One of the things I always put into, those, into my blessings or I try to on a regular basis is that surprise and delighted. Like the results of this are going to surprise and delight me. And, and the more I say those things, like the affirmations and all of the important things, we, things like that, is the more I do those things, the more I move into doing those things and practice those things, the more they're available to me and the more I can see the fruits of that, of living that way through my thinking, in, my, in my, the outcomes of my life, by practicing those things. So three days later, I'm getting ready to start a new group meeting that night, a, a webinar call, and I'm sitting there about an hour ahead of time, and I'm just kind of prep myself and, and just kind of, you know, get everything centered. And, and so my phone rings. And so I answer my phone, and the gentleman says, Hello, my name is John. He had a longer last name than I did. And I'm not going to try to say it, but John so-and-so, and, and you were at the doctor last, this was like a Monday, Tuesday, that was a Friday when I was at the doctor. He goes, you were at the doctor on Friday? Go, yes. And he goes, you had some issues with your insurance and stuff? I go, what's this about? And he goes, well, somebody from the doctor's office reached out to me, and I think I can help you with your situation. Now, I have to tell you, right now is a turning point. Because if I just stayed in that first state I was in when throwing that phone out the window or just poured into that with, I guess I'm happy I'm breathing, and I just stayed there, I know me. When I first, first off, I probably wouldn't have answered the call because I didn't know who it was coming from. Secondly, if I did answer that call, it would not have, I, as soon as he said insurance, I would have been so ticked off still, I would have hung the phone up and, on him and I'd have been done with the whole thing. And now my outcome would have been that I'm stuck with an insurance that pays two co-pays of $50 a year and $18 on a $580 prescription, right? But because of doing that, because of this principle where it talks about I create my experience by what I choose to think, which means we have a choice in it, by what I choose to think. I, I wasn't super polite to John at first on the phone, but when he started talking and he said that about the, you know, I might have a solution for you, I wasn't, I didn't buy into it. I just said, okay, let me, what, what is it, John? Because right now I'm not in a good position with all this, and I have a group starting, and I really want to be in a good state of mind, and I'm telling this guy. <laughs> so he goes, I have an insurance policy I can get you. It's added to yours. It costs you $100 a month. It will cover... 12 office visits a year at $25. It'll cover 12 specialist visits a year at $25. It'll cover all your blood work and your, like any testing that's not hospital stay at $25. And it'll cover your prescriptions at $80, at 80%. And then come the end of the year, we'll talk about Blue Cross policy. But I, I didn't go reaching out. See, this is, what, this is the part of, of the unity principle that really, really, really I hope you carry away today, is I didn't go out and, and start making a bunch of phone calls and this and that and everything else and look for this. 
I just got my thinking in alignment with that power that breathes me and the mightiness of that power that breathes me. And I knew it would happen. I knew that I would be surprised and delighted with this. So you could imagine the rest of my conversation with John was quite delightful. <laughs> and since I've signed up and it moved in. But the reason, and, and so now I can look at that and go, oh my God, what a great teaching story. What a great story to help other people to elevate that. Because my whole purpose here, standing here right here and now in front of you guys, it's not to brag about how I, I love my life and I absolutely do. Like I have a coach in my life because they tell me best coaches have coaches and a mentor, and I have those in my life, and I don't know how many days I'll get up and I'll just get going, and like I'm, I'm one of these early riser night owl peoples, and I always have been, but now it's like I can't wait for my alarm to go off in the morning, and I get up out of bed, and I'm excited to get into that day, and it's because of applying these principles, all five of the principles of unity, but in big part, it's that number three, is I take responsibility over my thoughts, and those thoughts determine my feelings, and I continue to build on my beliefs of what a mighty power I have right here and we each have right here. That's like a guidance signal, built-in guidance signal for us, helping us to grow and expand. So my hopes for you guys is to, to take a situation, a circumstance, or a condition in your life. And as it's happening, instead of waiting, you know how we wait until something's over and then we go, okay, like, man, this stinks. I can't stand this. And then we get to the other side and it's like, Life's pretty good. Life's okay. Like, I like my life. It's, it's while we're in the midst of that because that's, those are the opportunities to take control of our thoughts to choose what thoughts we want to have. Does that make sense to you guys? Awesome. So, again, like I said, my belief is, see, the other thing I've come to believe is, like, and I haven't been struck down by lightning for this yet, but I call God blue. And it's not because it's my favorite color. Blue is my favorite color, but that's not the reason why. The reason why is I do a lot of interviewing with people and I do a lot of talking with people and, you know, in the workshops and coaching and all this. And I love hearing when people have a story and it's just, you know, it just lit up their life. And I'll go, and throughout the process, I'll go, well, what happened? And they'll start telling me. And I go, then what happened? Then what happened? And how did that happen? And at some point, they always go, I don't know, it came out of the blue. And that's that part right there. And a lot of th what, what we'll learn if, you get a if you're at the workshop today, a lot of what we'll see is that connection and that divider line. You know, I, So I ran my life so poorly that I ended up having to go to recovery, getting a recovery program for, my, for alcohol. That's how poorly I ran my life. Today, though, that's one of the best things that happened to me because it launched me into back to that and ultimately what I work with clients on and groups and whatever I work with, what I work with them on is getting back to that authentic self. Because that authentic self already has what your passions are. They already, have, they already know the level of your dreams. All of that stuff is right there, just waiting for us to take our humanness and bring it up to the vibration of where they exist. And that's when we start experiencing endless abundance. You know, when we look at when we look at what choose to think choose what to think. You know, we already talked about what what determines what we think, right? And our situation, and our upbringing, our past, and where all those things come from. So what happens is we hit an event or something happens in our life, and it triggers one of those pasts, right? And a lot of times, what determines what we do next is what happened in that past ex experience. Right? If it's something that worked out really good, then we step into it, right? And if it's something that didn't work out the way we want, then we go, whoa, whoa, stay away from it, right? And so let me ask you guys this. I want to kind of go into another level because I got some time and I like to talk and I'm excited. Is what stops us a lot of times from really experiencing a life that we would love to live? What stops us? Fear, yes. Right? And we start out with something and we go, man, I got this. And then, we, and then there's another part of us that steps up, right? It says, oh, who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing, right? What's the high arching fear? What's the high arching fear above them all? Rejection, not good enough, those are all good. Huh? Thank you, sir. Failure. I had a gift, I'd give it to you, I don't, so you won't, but still a good call. Failure, right? What if I fail? 
Like, what if I fail? How much does that stop us in our lives? How much does that determine what we're going to choose to th- allow ourselves to think in our life by what if we fail? In the workshop, I'll give you more examples of this, but do you realize any person who's ever achieved any greatness in their life has a multitude of failures up to that level? I'll give you one of them right now, like Oprah Winfrey. Look at her works, and that part of my pa- vision and my passion is to be on Super Soul Sunday one day, sitting out by, the, sitting out by some trees outside, you know, with a cup of tea. But she was fired by television executives because she wasn't fit for television. One of hers. Now, could you imagine if she wouldn't have gone forward and let that held her back? See, a part of my belief is God experiences, you know, the human condition through each of us in our lives. That's part of it. The other part of it is we, each and every single one of us breathing, have a unique purpose and a new, unique benefit to bring to this world. But if we play small and we live small and we live in that state of I'm not good enough or I'm not this or I'm not that or what if I fail or fall down, we never get to bring that forward. And the whole world needs that uniqueness of every single human being on this planet. When we talk about all these things, whether it be politics, which I refuse to get into, whether it be like all these wars and religious wars and, you know, all the stuff like that around us. See, one of the things I do because I want to choose my thinking is I cut out CNN, constant negative news. I don't pay attention to, to constant negative news anymore. I don't let it embed. I don't let it because it doesn't serve me. So what I do is I look for the positive side of things. So as we start doing this and as more and more people start going in and getting that unique gift, and tapping into that power to help bring that forward, the things that we're experiencing across the nation or across the world all of a sudden start settling down and settling down and settling down. You know, when we had all this stuff going on about racism and all this stuff, and like everything you did kind of added to it, right? And you'd hear all these back and forth and everything, and it's his fault, their fault, this fault. I love this one gentleman on YouTube I was listening to, and he said, all we have to do to fix this is quit putting our attention on it. And now, I know if I stop thinking about one thing, if I, I have to put something else in its place. So that whole experience that day of, of speak blessings into this moment was about letting go of what was currently, what I was currently experiencing and instead putting my blessings in place of that. And when we start doing that and we start owning that and we start stepping up and we start really understanding that we're creating our experience and not just our experience, but the experience of our family and friends, the experience of our workmates, the experience of our community, ultimately it impacts the entire world. Can you see why I'm so excited about what I do? (laughs) So again, I love what I do. I love coming up against those paradigms and those patterns and those upper level limits. And it's an example of that that, because we all have them. So without raising your hands, well, how can I do this? Let me think. Okay, we'll do this and then wrap up. How many people here can experience making $25,000 a year? What it would like to, what it would be like to live in on $25,000 a year, bank accounts, all that. Like how many people can imagine $25,000 a year? So that means that you guys that didn't raise your hand, you couldn't imagine making that much money a year in your life. Okay. Okay, I'm, st- I'm starting out there. What about $50,000 a year? Seventy-five. Got to work with me here, people. It's interactive. $100,000 a year. $150,000 a year. $250,000 a year. $500,000 a year. Now, when I say that, that means you've ex- you're experiencing that. You know what that, you know, like you know, like you know. You know what your live like. You know what your bank account looks like. You know the kind of food you buy. You know the kind of places you shop. You know where your vacation, you know all of that. So $500,000 a year, that's okay. Okay, $750,000 a year. A million dollars a year. $10 million a month. Depending on the crowd, at some point I lose people at different places, but the reason I use money is because we all have a very similar thought about money, okay? But it works in all other areas of your life. Where you lowered your hand, somewhere between the number I said prior 
and that number I said that made you lower your hand is your upper level limit with regards to finances. And we all have those. The richest, wealthiest people in the world have that. The difference between those wealthiest people in the world and people who still want to get to that level is in this principle right here. It's in what we choose to think, what we choose to feel, and what we choose to believe in our life. And so when I said about I have a coach, because best coaches have coaches, is that continues to help me to elevate that in my life. In all areas, though, you know, we talked about finances, but your love relationships. You know, I work with people who start out with a really good relationship, and over time, you know, they'll see themselves, as we're working together, they'll see themselves doing things to cause interruption in the relationship. It's because it's, it's uncomfortable for them. You see that in jobs. You see that in all areas of life. So looking at this, I hope I've given you a some things to look at with regards to this unity principle number three is that you create your experience by what you choose to think, by what you choose to feel and believe, and give you some areas as far as some items like that, you know, speaking blessings into the moment to work on that and start working on elevating that instead of buying into that situation that's happening. Because I've learned from my life and everybody I've worked with is every situation that happens in our life. I wrote a book. And in the back, I said, at some point, I was going through divorce, four states away from my son. It was miserable. And, and it, that's when I got in recovery, so I didn't have alcohol to use. And, <clears throat> and at some point, I got to say, and if, if I take the judgment out of things happening in my life, there's no good or bad, there's no right or wrong, there's no fair or unfair, there's no just or unjust. Now, I don't say I do this perfectly, as I explained in my story. But if I take the judgment out of things, then I can look at what's happening, and, I, and then I go about it with the belief if, if I believe that everything happens for me and not to me, why is this happening? And I could start seeing what ended up being the book, Life's Lessons. I could start seeing why those things were happening. I could start seeing why I'd go through a divorce. I was always a pretty decent man, but I went through a divorce and was paying way more money than what I had to live on even for so long was to help me break that people pleaser within me. And I could see how every experience I went through in my life was to help me to grow and expand that authentic self inside. And that's what I hope for you guys, each of you guys today, as I've given you a spark to do that. Thank you very much.